Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at completing the square. More explicitly I want to look at the Regions question, the New York Regions question, solve 2x squared minus 12x plus 4 equals 0 by completing the square, expressing the result in simplest radical form. Okay, so we start by writing down this quadratic equation and now with completing the square, in order to use that technique, it's important that we have a leading coefficient of positive 1 and right now we have a leading coefficient of 2. So what we need to do in our first step is to factor this 2 out. And when we factor a 2 away from 2x squared, we're left with an x squared. When we factor 2 away from minus 12x, we're left with a minus 6x. And now finally, when we factor a 2 away from positive 4, we're left with a positive 2. And now if you want to check this step, you could go ahead and redistribute this 2, but it should work out to the original quadratic equation. So now, to get rid of this 2, all we need to do is divide both sides by 2. We have that these 2's will cancel, which tells us that we have x squared minus 6x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, at this stage of the problem, we need to start, this is where that completing the square technique comes in. And it's always a good idea to isolate the piece that you need to complete the square. And now with completing the square, it's really important to isolate x squared minus 6x, because in the grand scheme, we're really looking at x squared plus ax plus b, because remember, we have a leading one. With every completing the square problem, it's important to isolate the x squared and the x term. So now, now that this is is uh, we go ahead and we isolate this, and we do so by subtracting 2 from both sides. So that gives us that x squared minus 6x is equal to minus 2. But now, to get started with completing the square, now that we have x squared, the x squared and the x term isolated, we need to look at one half of the term in front of the x variable. And now the term in front of the x variable is a negative 6. So half of negative 6 would be negative 3. So we get started with this problem by writing x minus 3 squared. And we leave a space and then equals negative 2. And in this space, we're going to have plus or minus some extra term. But the goal is to substitute x squared minus 6x in terms of a perfect square. So now, some students, I mean, when they're more practiced with this, they could do this really fast in their head. They could look at this and they could say, all right, well, x squared minus 6x and the extra piece is going to be a positive 9. So subtract 9. But I'm not going to show it only that way. I want to show it in a way that makes it easier for everyone to do it. So we look on the side at the problem x minus 3 squared, which is equal to x minus 3 times x minus 3. Now to simplify x minus 3 times x minus 3, and let's keep in mind that this is still all equal to x minus 3 squared. When we simplify this right-hand side, we're going to have x squared minus 3x minus another 3x plus 9. So in simplified quadratic form, we have x minus 3 squared is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9. But remember what we said before, our ultimate goal was to isolate. We want to isolate this particular part of the equation. We need x squared minus 6x in perfect square form. So now, in order to do that, we have our x squared minus 6x over here. But what we don't need is that extra plus 9. So what we could go ahead and do now is get rid of it by subtracting 9. When we subtract 9 from one side, we have to subtract 9 from the other side of the equation. And what this tells us is is that x minus 3 squared minus 9 is equal to x squared minus 6x. So now what this allows us to do is we could substitute for x squared minus 6x in this equation here with x minus 3 squared minus 9. So now let's go ahead and do that and we'll finish solving this problem. So now we have instead of x squared minus 6x we're going to go ahead and write x minus 3 squared minus 9 is equal to, and remember, x squared minus 6x was equal to minus 2. So now minus 2. 
So now to solve for x, all we need to do is we add 9 to both sides, and we have x minus 3 squared is equal to, now a minus 2 and a plus 9 is equal to a plus 7. To get x alone right now, x is being squared. It's being, 3 is being subtracted from x, and that quantity is being squared. So to get rid of this square, we go ahead and we find the square root of both sides. But now, this stage here is a really critical step. We could go ahead and say x minus 3 is equal to plus minus square root of 7. Now the reason why we inherit a plus minus in this case brings up a topic that makes a lot of college professors cry. They will cry if you do this in college. The square root of x squared is equal to x. This is not true at all. The square root of x squared is equal to absolute value of x, which starts to explain why this square root of 7 inherits that plus minus. But we will cover the definition of absolute value in an alternate video, and you'll see, we'll go more in depth as to why it inherits that. So now we have x minus 3 is equal to plus minus root 7. So now to solve for x, all we need to do is add 3 to both sides. So we have that x is equal to 3 plus or minus root 7. And that is going to be your final answer to this question. If this was my standardized test, and I got this, and I had a lot of time, I know for some of those state tests they give you like three hours to take the exam, it'd be a good idea to run this quadratic equation through the quadratic formula for finding the roots. And you should get the same exact roots for, for this problem, 3 plus or minus root 7. Okay, well that's going to conclude this problem as well as this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.